You saw the montage, so you already know the program. There's a lot to explore and not much time, so I'll keep this short. Welcome and thanks for sparing us some of your time this Sunday. I'm Theodore Henry, and the producers tell me you're going to find some useful information in today's show. So let's all stick around to see what's coming up after the break. What are we are you full of our roots and culture? That <laughs> was in Jamaica 60. <laughs> Jamaica 60? What a piece of news, Miss Matty. I feel like my heart going boss up. Just in, the island of Jamaica is on the verge of celebrating its 60th year of independence. Oh, holy, we have to celebrate it now. <laughs> they say the people, them, you know, them come here, you know. But you see, when our people decide, say the other people, them free paper, oh no. Know? Them say if it's war, start it, whatever. We are collect medal, panther, you know? a medal. Come on, tap, tap, we give them, you know? The celebrations are slated to begin on January 1st, 2000. 2022 organized by the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport. We have more in this report. I am on site and planning activities are ablaze. Persons are advised to download the Reggae Jamaica app to know what it free. Why free? <laughs> activities for the Jamaica 60 celebration. Yeah. If they don't know the app to get the updates then. Jamaica's COVID-19 vaccination plan is still in effect. Persons with appointments to receive a vaccine will be allowed to do so during curfew hours. Persons will be required to present evidence of the appointment. And how it will work is you will show the text message that you would have received or your email to the police. If you wish to make an appointment, please do so online by visiting moh.gov.jm or by calling 888-663-5683. Vaccination sites will open until 4 p.m. daily. Vaccination still a keep. Go get your jab today. We've discussed this before, but the conversation never gets old. It's about ensuring you can get a pension after you've retired your working shoes. Of course, this is important for everyone, but today we're centering the conversation on household workers. The Ministry of Labor and Social Security is targeting this group, encouraging them to become contributors to the National Insurance Scheme. <music> Welcome to Get the Facts, the program that provides you with information on government's policies and initiatives. I'm your host, Enthros Campbell. The government over the years has been encouraging more persons to become contributors of the National Insurance Scheme, the NIS. This is to secure an income by way of pension for when you are no longer able to work. Now, particular interest has been placed on household workers. And in this first segment of the program, we will speak with President of the Jamaica Household Workers Union, Shirley Price. Ms. Price, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. So good to have you. Yes. Let us start, with, let us start with who is in this category of workers. Okay, a domestic workers is a um, person that is paid by a household, meaning person who, who is own their homes and employ somebody. It could be a cook, it could be a driver, it could be a gardener, domestic worker, caregiver, a particular nurse. They are categorized as domestic workers. Right, we're trying to get these people to contribute to the NIS. Tell us how is that going? What is the, what, how, what, are, what are your numbers like? Well, um, it's very low. It's very low and uh, we are fighting and we are, we are um, trying to go about to educate um, the category of workers to make sure that they are contributing to the NIS. Yes, uh -huh. yes because um, in the recent pandemic, they were totally left behind because um, they weren't contributing. Why? Why is it so low? Why, why, um, why? I think it's because of access. What do you and mean by access? Because um, domestic workers um, work long hours, and they, they, they work some work from Monday to Saturday, and they they, they pay through a stamp card, 
which they have got to get the stamp at the post office. So a domestic worker should pay half and the employer pay half, which is um, $250. Um, so, some, some, some employers go ahead and pay it on their own, but some of them split it. Domestic workers have to pay off and they pay their half. For domestic worker to go to post office, we all know that post office don't open and Saturday and Sunday, most of them, very few. And so when domestic workers leave work in the evening, Friday evening, they're already closed. And then Saturday, sometimes they come back to work or is the one day they have to do their chores with the kids and all of that. So it's kind of hard for them to reach there. What are you suggesting? Oh. I'm suggesting that there must be a special, special consideration for those categories of workers, such as a special window at the, the Minister of Labour where they can um, get special, special assistance. You know, so that, that even, though, even though they are at work, they can rush out and pay their NIS and go back to work. Right. And, and we are also asking the employers also to make sure that their domestic worker NIS is, is, is being paid and give them a time to go out and, and pay. This is the only way that domestic worker can get their pension right. is by contributing to their NIS. And not just pension, there's a whole category of benefits right. in paying your, your, your NIS. Right. Talk to us about the benefits, a little about the benefits. Oh, there's a lot of benefits. You know, yes. as we, we have a special brochure here, NIS and domestic workers, where domestic workers will have maternity leave when paying NIS. Yes. They will have... Invalidity. Invalidity, benefits. yes, benefits, yes. sorry. Mm -hmm. Retirement, pension, mm -hmm. spouse allowance, NI goal, okay. the insurance card, you have widow and widower's benefits, special child benefit, orphan benefit, funeral grant, you know, and okay. so much more. But now, with the, with the help of the International Labour Organization and the collaboration with the Minister of Labour, we are um, going across the island to, to have a awareness campaign and to register um, those um, categories of workers, not just domestic workers but, but um, low-income workers. All right. You've been having some consultations with the government. What, is, what kind of feedback are you getting from your, your members? Oh, they, 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 no, they welcome the consultation and, and to know that um, the NIS um, department, you know, going to be reaching them pathway. You know, they're going to they're gonna come and look for them instead of they going out to get the farms to register and all of that. They're, they're meeting them pathway. What are some of the issues that you're discussing? Well, well, we 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 talking about about the the, the them p not paying the NIS and the limitation that that they have, you know. Who, who not paying that? If if, 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 if the, the domestic worker, if they okay. don't hear their their NIS, you know, the limitation. For example, the other day when the care when the care package was out, they um they couldn't have um get have any any access to it because so. they would have to go online and put in their NIS, and they didn't. If you don't have NIS to put in the in that um, form, you cannot go any further. Okay. So, you know, know that they know that and they have experienced it because this pandemic has taught them a lot. Yes. You yes, know, so yes. because of that, you know, you know, once bitten, twice shy. What would you like to say to the members of your group? I would like to say to not just domestic workers, but, but the low income workers to go out and register, register for the NIS pension. Because if you don't do that, you will be left behind. It is on you. The forms are at the Minister of Labour office, 18 Ripon Road. And they are also at the Jamaica Household Workers Union office, 4 Ellis May Road in Offrey Tree. Call us. Our numbers, uh, number is 906-2849. Um, That's 906-2849. Twenty-eight, forty-nine. We have forms there. We will help you to fill the form out so you can start the process. We take a quick break at this point and thank Ms. Shirley Price, President of the Jamaica Household Workers Union, for sharing in today's program. We continue the conversation with Director of National Insurance at the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, Portia Magnus. Please stay with us. <music>
all children deserve positive parenting. Why not pamper us? Be patient with us. Make time to teach us and of course, play with us. Celebrate milestones with us and don't forget to be our number one supporter. Do all these things and practice positive parenting today. Welcome back to Get the Facts. Today's discussion is about getting more members of the household worker group to participate in the National Insurance Scheme, the NIS, to secure their retirement pension and other benefits. A conversation continues with Director of National Insurance at the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, Ms. Portia Magnus. Ms. Magnus, welcome to the program. So good to have you. Thank you for having me. Good. Now, what is the Ministry of Labor doing to increase the percentage, 3% of the group of the household workers who are registered and, and are participating, right? Tell me, mm -hmm. what, what are you doing to increase that number? Well, right now, we'll be ramping up our efforts. So before, what we would do is, is just the, the normal, where we go out and we do presentations and we participate in different events. But now we're going to be, what should I say? Be ramping it up, as I said before, yes, yes. by going into the media. So we'll be placing ads in the media, the... the the newspaper, radio, TV, as well as taking our services into the communities, working along with the Jamaica Household Workers Union to 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 get to take the services right. to these workers. So we can get pers persons registered. So we can get persons, persons registered, registered in the first instance and also contributing. Yes. And also to get the information out. It's important that persons, all workers in fact, are aware of all the benefits yes. that are available. And so for this group of workers in particular, we need them to know of the benefits that are available and what they stand to lose if they don't register and begin to contribute and okay. contribute consistently. What's the process like, the registration process? It's very simple. Yes. Uh -huh. um, we do have an application form which basically collects your contact information, stuff such as your, your name and your date of birth, very important, just one and a half pages. And it also requires your a valid ID and a document showing proof of birth. And that's it in a nutshell. And from that registration, you are given a NIS number which is unique to you and it follows you throughout your work life right. so even if you change employer even if you move from being employed to someone and you begin to open your own business you know um, then that number stays with you so we have your contributions tracking throughout your working life right after registration what after registration, then contributions. Yes. Tell me about the contribution. Who pays the contribution? Well, based on our legislation, the National Insurance Act, how it is set up, the domestic worker is an employee in one sense. So because you do have different types of domestic workers. So where you are employed by someone, then the requirement is 50% by the employer and 50% by the employee. In the case of the domestic worker, in Jamaica, what we have observed though, it's, it's one of two cases. It's either the employer pays the full amount because it is so small, or the worker, him or herself, does the contributions on their own. Right. How do we go about making the contributions? Uh, where do they go to get contributions to, to done? All right, very simply, it is that you, once you register and you would have indicated that you are a domestic worker, we, we, have a, we have an antiquated method of contributing, which we intend to change in the near future. So you are issued with a stamp card and the contributions come in when you go to the post office and you purchase the special NIS stamps. Then you affix the stamps to the stamp card at the end of the calendar year. Then you return it to the NIS office and we actually enter the value of your contributions using the value of the stamps onto our system. So it's accredited to you. So we really have to fix that system. Yes, right? we do. Are we, are we getting there anytime yes, soon? Yes, yes, the technology. Yes. So yes. in fact, two days ago, we did have a meeting at work with our MIS team. And one of the areas that we will be focusing on in the near future, beginning next year, is changing registration to automate that service. Right. So that's the first thing. But we should encourage persons who are employing 
um, domestic, domestic workers, workers yes. to really help them to, p to make this contribution. Yes, so yes. our employers should be requesting or are or, or certainly requiring their employee because it's, it's still a, it is a job yes. um, to register with the NIS. Give your workers the time to go to the office and register. And if they can't go to the office, then call the Jamaica Household Workers Union and they will make the arrangements. And we will work along with the team at the Jamaica Household Workers Union as well to get you the forms yes. and to have you registered. But you don't, you don't have to go to the offices very often. You can pick up your, your supply of stamps you can read that the choice is yours yes so if you wish you can go once for the once per per month you can go to the post office two months so the choice is really yes. yours because you have an entire year mm -hmm. it will be easier though it's 250 dollars per week so let's say you are paid weekly do you want to go to the post office and purchase a thousand dollars yes which then would be the for the four yes the four weeks, you know, so yes. the choice is yours. It's so you wouldn't flexible. have to get up and go every single week. I no, mean, not if at you all. Can't afford to do that. Not at and all. And the employer can actually pick up the stamps, can't they? Yes, they can. Yes. Anybody can purchase. Oh, right, right. Anyone. All right. Talk mm -hmm. to us about the consultation between the worker group now. How is it going? What? Wonderful. So we had a lovely session on Saturday that was facilitated by the, the child labor section within the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. And that was at the Jamaica Conference Center. And the goal was really to share information, all the benefits on the NI, that the NIS has to offer to domestic mm -hmm. workers, mm -hmm. as well as how easy it is to register. That spurred a lot of interest. And mm -hmm. so we saw primarily ladies, I must say there was one king among the group, one gentleman, yes. uh, primarily ladies coming to find out that they're interested in knowing how, how many contributions they have, how can they resume um, contributing because they had started contributing before and had stopped for one reason or another, as well as collect application forms for different benefits. So already you do have members who are aware of the benefits available mm -hmm. and have been taken advantage of, of the benefits. But we do need the bulk, the majority of workers mm -hmm. now to get on board and register so they won't miss out. You see, our goal at the Ministry of Labor and Social Security is to have more persons with social insurance coverage and less persons on the public assistance side yes, of the yes, ministry. Yes. Good, good. All right, tell us about NIS generally for persons who, uh, why should we um, register and participate? NIS generally for persons, well, you register because you do want to ensure that you do have social insurance coverage. What do we mean by that? Yes. Well, in the whole scheme of things, we say life happens. Anything can happen during your work life. So it is if you're a domestic worker starting right there and you become pregnant, then your employer, chances are, will not be able to pay you while you're off on maternity leave and also engage someone else. This is where NIS kicks in, where we do provide a maternity allowance only for domestic workers. Only, very no good. other category very of worker. Good, but well, you good. could also start working and you get injured on the job. Yes. So we do have an employment injury benefit. If you develop a disability, we have a disability pension. Mm -hmm. Now once we say pension, it's paid for life. Um, we do also have an invalidity pension. And no, we do have so many lifestyle illnesses and mm -hmm. some of them do cause persons to be permanently what should I say, unable to work. Mm -hmm. And so this is where you can qualify for an invalidity pension. Yes. We also have survivor's benefits. So if you die and you leave a spouse, there's a pension for your spouse. If you have children younger than 18, there are benefits that can be paid mm -hmm. to the guardian of, of your child or children yes. until they're 18 years old. The most popular one is our retirement pension, and that too is paid for life. And once you qualify for any pension at all from the NIS, automatically you're given health insurance. Yes. And this yes. is comprehensive health insurance coverage. And a very popular benefit is our funeral grant. And that will help now to pay for the funeral expenses, be it for you or your spouse. And this is whether or not your spouse would have contributed to NIS. Once you contribute, then you can get that, the funeral grant to help to offset the expenses. Yes. So there are just so many benefits available. Yeah. Having a pension to look forward to gives some level of peace of mind. But you must start now so that your contribution can build up over time to allow you to retire with an income.
We hope you found the discussion useful and interesting. This has been Get the Facts. Thanks to our guest, Ms. Shirley Price, President of the Jamaica Household Workers Union, and Ms. Portia Magnus, Director of National Insurance at the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. And thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm Enthrose Campbell. Take good care. Redefining access to housing, revitalizing urban centers, restoring the environment, and reducing the impacts of climate change. Goals set and met by the Ministry of Housing, Urban Renewal, Environment, and Climate Change in 2021. Join us for a review of activities in the Ministry in the year that was right here on this station. If you have children, you want them to learn self-sufficiency, responsibility, the value of earning their own money, and how to feed themselves. Keep watching. Due to the pandemic, children are more engaged in online schooling at home, and you are probably wondering what else you can do to keep them engaged. Have you considered agriculture? It is a good way to get them outside and active, teaching them responsibility, the value of hard work, making money, and even entrepreneurship. Nikoi Kernaldi is proof that the strategy actually does work. He took his lessons and became not only a successful farmer, but an agricultural educator. I have been involved in agriculture for many years now. As far as I can remember, because my parents are both farmers, and growing up in a farmer's household, it was automatic that I developed the skill and also the interest. The strategy that my parents would employ is that though their farm is the main farm, but what they would do, they would give you, let's say, 24 tomato seedlings, and you'll plant those for yourself. So you'll start practicing how to cure them, and then you'll harvest them, and then you'll get all of that money. So I started to see the benefit from very early. What my parents did again, they gave each of us a female goat. So we would start the reproduction from early and that money would go towards our savings. Imagine what life would be like for your children, rearing their own animals, growing their own produce, making their own money. Just think about it. If you're still not convinced, meet our five-year-old friend O'Neill Grant, affectionately called Chris from St. Elizabeth. Me go to the goat, me feed the fall, me feed the rabbit. Look at mommy, mama. Come, mama. Yes, you have rabbit and you feed him a long time. Like sometimes when you go in there, go in there, you clean out the coop and you catch water and you give rabbit. Otherwise, you feed him fall. You see, you have chicken neck up and feed him the same way. Before Chris, three year old, Chris always go and come. And come. So after that, in follow me, go push a man time, watch how me tie goat them. Sometimes you say, Mama, I want to fit, I want to rope it tie. So sometimes you give me rope it tie, he go and get away. Sometimes go down there and get away. So I say, All right, Chris, come show you fit tie goat. And he say, All right, Mama. So when find Chris start tie goat them, then don't get away again. So it all get used to get used to now, till he never remember, say, if you go by your mother. I just me want to steer it. My plan is going to help me. Anything I do, he help me. Till after that, now, I thought I raised for the chicken the same way. He get up a man time. Let me open it up. He help me feed them. He start getting wash out the pan, get them water the same way. When they pluck, he catch them and give me them. We kill them. So, everything I do, Chris is helping on the night the same way. And Chris manages to do all this while still making time for his online classes. When we give Chris a goat, Chris said, Mama, you send the goat on big, I want to sell him and buy a cow calf. My goat My goat My goat You be all right now, so sometimes when you get in trouble, you dry him and hug him up and put him in head 
and I've worked like I do so rubbing down so I keep myself calm. Like when the sun had a day time now, he said, Mama, give me a pan. And Chris take a pan, catch water pipe, and go give every one of them water. And I come back. And I even know when we reach I'll say three, four o'clock, Chris said, Mama, come ready, we are going to feed what they can Yes, you get used to it, you get used to it. So sometimes when I'm up here, in the bush long time, go give out the water. And sometimes when I look out at what inked them in already long time. So you say Chris going to be a farmer? Yes, I want to be a farmer. I want to be a farmer. Yes. So if you don't have a farm or a yard like Chris to rear animals or to do farming on a large scale, then utilize your backyard and your containers. Remember, reduce, reuse and recycle. You can sow seedlings or plant a small vegetable garden and sell your excess to your neighbors. Here's a secret. If you plant okra, once those okra trees start bearing, you can reap every three days. So imagine selling at least five bags of okra at $100 per bag every three days for let's say a month. Imagine all that money that you can make. Do the math. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade wishes to advise the public that on Wednesday, January 19 and Thursday, January 20, office hours for consular and other services will be from 12 noon to 2 p.m. This is to facilitate activities connected to the official opening of the Ministry's new headquarters. Regular hours of operation will resume on Friday, January 21. Were they right? The producers, I mean. Did you learn anything useful today? Talk to us about it. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, and also on Twitter. If you want to review any aspect of the program, visit our YouTube channel or the JIS's website, which you can find at jis.gov.jm. And don't forget, our year in review series continues tomorrow with the Ministry of Housing, Urban Renewal, Environment, and Climate Change. This has been Jamaica Magazine, and I've been Theodore Henry. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday and see you next time. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.